is what I'm trying to argue is that we generally, most people have an irrational, fervent belief in the good of civilization. And that civilization itself and embedded within that the notion of progress are irrational, disprovable uh, beliefs that we hold. And we don't it, – it, it's a hell of a lot of work to get someone to the point where they can even see that as a belief structure, you know, and start to question it. Say it ain't so, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, I, I can't believe that. You you write books because you believe the world is improvable. You have podcasts because you believe progress is possible. Am I right? No. Why do you do these things? Well, you know, I do these things because I believe that suffering is um, is something that can be mitigated through okay. knowledge. Okay. So... I I do these things, be, you know, honestly, the the first reason I do these things is to maintain an audience so that when I write a book, a bunch of people will buy it and maybe it'll get on the bestseller list. And, sure. <laughs> you know, that's that's the, the I can relate to that. Yeah, that's the primary reason. The second reason you'll notice, which is also a selfish reason, is that I get to talk to people like you and whoever I find interesting. You know, they've got a reason to set aside some time to chat with me. So that makes my life more interesting. Sure. Um you know, and the third reason is that it creates a community of people uh, who are interested in this stuff and who like my take on it and like the sort of people that I bring on. And that is wonderful, enriches my life, but it also enriches their lives because I get emails all the time from people who say, um, you know, I found a community. I've, you know, you, you right. have convinced me I'm not crazy. And the people you have on the show who are smart, they're professors, they're authors, they're scientists, they reinforce what I feel myself, but I didn't know anyone else felt it, you know? Gotcha. So, but I don't think it's changing the world. I don't think it's going to save us from global warming or the trillions of tons of plastic circulating in the Pacific Ocean. I have an essentially, uh, apocalyptic view of our species and civilization. So, so it's like it's like it's sort of like arranging a uh, a tea party on the Titanic. Yeah, I feel like I'm giving massages on the Titanic. <laughs> you know, okay, yeah, I hear you. I guess the difference I, I I agree with you in terms of the threat to the planet and the dangers of global warming and the sort of physical realities of what this planet can sustain. I'm very sad and, and and pessimistic on that front actually my wife is just sort of like hey man that's the way it goes she's she's pretty um <laughs> she's sort of stoic about it um but i guess the difference between you and me is i, I guess i do hold an irrational uh, notion that perhaps i agree with martin luther king that that there is a kind of arc where we are um decreasing suffering little by little we have a lot of setbacks there's always an atomic bomb now and then there's always a rwanda now and then but if i look at the course of human history i feel like human rights it increase and expand little by little. Suffering of sentient creatures decreases little by little. Again, there's always a wrench in it, but the but but we get back on track and we do better and we do better. And when I read, uh, so I guess I I have I guess I'm I'm one of those folks you're trying to diagnose. I, I do have a sort of a belief that that there is a is progress being made. You know, and, and it's the curse of my of my life at the moment that I'm writing a book um, disputing that. And the, but the truth is, and maybe maybe you can relate to this on a completely different level. The truth is that I envy you the comfort of your belief, mm. and I don't want to take it away from you. Oh God, I hate being on the re on the receiving end of those sentiments. I'm usually the one saying it. To <laughs> yeah, I figured you'd relate to that. <laughs> That's so sad. Um, but, but no, but on a, on a completely serious level, yeah. you've got kids. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. And I, I, I get really uncomfortable sometimes when I'm speaking to people who have kids and we're talking about these sorts of issues because I feel like, well, I could point out A and B and C and D. I could really destroy this guy's position. Right. But what, what the, why would I want to do that? This person <laughs> has kids who he's worried about the world they're going to inhabit He's worried about his grandkids, the world they're going to inhabit. Yeah. What's yeah. in it for me to to you know beat him into submission? It's not something I really want to do, but I but I do feel it's true. You know, right. I mean, you can sell a hell of a lot more books yeah. if you're hopeful. No, so, I hear you. I, I I I like I said, I I take that position to a T. Whenever I'm in gate talking to a religious believer, or absolutely. Um, 
And I, and, I, and I also would say, I guess what distinguishes me from a religious believer is I'm perfectly willing to say you may, may, may very well be right, and this could just be a result of, of the oxytocin in my brain and the kind of personality I have. I'm generally an optimistic guy. So it, 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 you're right. It could be totally irrational and just kind of part of my personality. It, it's, a strange, it's a strange thing because I'm, you know, this book I'm writing, it's called Civilized to Death, right? Okay. <laughs> it's not, I love it. Yeah, it's a, a bit of a downer. Um, but, but what I'm arguing against is a vision of human nature and nature itself and, and the pre-civilized life, which I think is demonized, which gets us back to, to you know, religion. Um, l- let me read you a, a quote that I'm working on right now. You'll, you'll get a kick out of this and see if you can guess who wrote this. The total amount of suffering per year in the natural world is beyond all decent contemplation. During the minute it takes me to compose this sentence, thousands of animals are being eaten alive. Many others are running for their lives, whimpering with fear. Others are slowly being devoured from within by rasping parasites. Thousands of all kinds are dying of starvation, thirst, and disease. It must be so. If there ever is a time of plenty, this very fact will automatically lead to an increase in the population until the natural state of starvation and misery is restored. Wow. In a universe of electrons and selfish genes, blind physical forces and genetic replication, some people are going to get hurt, others are going to get lucky, and you won't find any rhyme or reason in it, nor any justice. The universe that we observe has precisely the properties we should expect if there is, at bottom, no design, no purpose, no evil, no good, nothing but pitiless indifference. I'm going to go with Jim Belushi. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> the big Lebowski. Uh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Hey, I wasn't far off. I was, no. Uh, um, you yeah. Know, you yeah. know, uh, there was a giveaway. It's Richard Dawkins. Okay. Fair. Ultimate, ultimate atheist. The god of the atheist. Well, I caught the selfish gene reference, and then I thought, oh, it couldn't be Richard Dawkins. <laughs> he would never pat himself you know, on the back. I mean, I obviously, I first went, oh, Nietzsche, or it's going to be, you know, Malthus or something. But, but uh, yeah, powerful, sober, sober words, right? Oh, I think it's pure bullshit. In uh, the sense that? In the sense that what he's doing is he's demonizing the natural world. Oh, I see what you're saying. And he's saying, you know, the natural state, he he says the natural state of starvation and misery must be restored. You know, I've spent a fair amount of time hiking around, looking at wild animals and stuff, and I don't see, you know, wild animals that are all starving and miserable. Well, that was my, when you started reading it, that was my first thought. I was like, well, this is kind of an empirical question here. We we could measure the degree to which, you know, we could pick a species and say what percent of its life is spent licking and sleeping and napping and smelling and what percent. I mean, it's, it's almost, it's not even an opinion. It's just like we could quantify it, you know, like. Exactly. I mean, mean, you you go to the, you know, to a safari and what do you see? You see a bunch of lions lying around sleeping. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm, I'm with you on that. And then I, you know, I, I absolutely agree. It's a, what a talk about projection on the part of Richard Dawkins. Yeah. But you've got, see, now this is the thing. What they do is they demonize the natural state. Hobbes did the same thing, right? So the life of man is solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. They demonize the life in the natural state in order to make the civilized life seem better by comparison. Interesting. And thereby fuel this belief in progress, which is just propaganda. And that's why I equate it with religious belief. It's like saying, hey, stick with us and we'll, you know, you'll get salvation. Well, you know, stick with us. We're going to cure cancer. Sure you are. Get back to me when you have, right? 